Whilst many guitar players still use big stadium sized guitar rigs for small clubs and studio use, the trend for guitar combos up to around 20 watts is still as popular as ever in both live and studio environments. From 1998 to the present day, car amplifiers in the USA have produced all valve hand-wired guitar combos that are respected by musicians around the world, not only for their stunning looks, but for their reliability and sonic versatility. Steve Carr is the man behind the company and he's joining us now from Pittsburgh, North Carolina, USA. Hello, Steve, and welcome to the show. Hey, Lars, thanks for having me. It's uh it's fun to do. I've never done anything like this, and uh, it's great. Coast to coast, continent to continent. <laughs> well, it's a pleasure, of course, but I need to know what the weather's like in North Carolina. Us Brits are fascinated by the weather. Wow. Uh, you're not going to like this. Uh, today is sunny, and I think the high is going to be 67, so it's pretty pleasant. So car amplifiers are renowned for their classic vintage sound based on, say, amps from the 50s and the 60s. And they feature circuits you've designed yourself. But we'll talk about that in a minute. I mean, first impressions we get of anything new, uh, be it a guitar or an amplifier, the first thing we usually see is a visual. And all car amplifiers, including the new 10 watt Super B we're going to talk about in a minute, have this stunning retro image with supple multicolored vinyl coverings, weaved speaker cloth and groovy grill shapes. Who's the man behind these cool designs? Uh, well, you know, I've got a great group of guys and we all pitch in. Uh, recently, Lou Gagliano, who's head of our wood shop, he and I work together a lot on these uh, designs, making sure one, that we can produce them in a way that makes sense, and two, just to, to flesh out fun, fun new ideas. But really it started with my interest in 50s and 60s vibe, kind of retro stylings, and that's just a personal preference. You know, when you go to make an amp, you're trying to make the best circuit you can, the best sound, the best feel, the most fun, and the visuals should come right along with it. I mean, why not? That's the been the thinking all along. That's right, and a lot of, um, say, guys making amplifiers are quite particular about what wood they use for the construction of the cabinets. What woods do you use? We're standing on the shoulders of giants, not only for the uh, circuits um, and sounds, you know, the classic sounds, but also, in a lot of ways, the construction. One of the earliest amps that um, I really bonded with as a guitar player was a, I've uh, got a 1964 Deluxe Reverb, and I know we're, most of us are all old enough, old enough to remember this kind of stuff, but you know, I bought that one when it was relatively cheap. You know, there wasn't quite the vintage market. But anyway, the construction of that amp is a finger jointed pine box with a floating baffle. So the speaker baffle is only attached on the side so it can move along with uh, vibrations. And that sort of um, concept of construction we have kept throughout virtually with every amp. There's a few exceptions for, you know, just to mix it up and have aesthetic difference. But, uh, but generally everything we make is a pine box. We use dovetails instead of finger joints and then a floating baffle. We have a number of methods, not always the fender method of, of, of floating the baffle, but making sure, you know, the baffle that holds the speaker can vibrate in some ways on its own and contribute a warm snappiness to the sound. So that's, We've just found a formula that works for us and, and stick with it. Let's look at the new car Super B then. It has a top loaded front facing control panel that's nice and easy to read in a dark environment. And it features car's secret weapons, a three position a preset and a switchable attenuator. Now both of these have received crit critical acclaim in the, in the media. In some ways, that started with our, our first Mercury amp, which came out in 2003. Back then, I know I'll get to the Super B in a second, but uh, I was talking to one of our good dealers and, and saying, hey, you know, what's, what's not out there that you think people want? And they said, a really high quality, full featured, low power amp. Because even at that time, I guess it was around 2002, I was talking to them, um, you know, the at home players, the bedroom players, uh, that kind of market was really starting to grow. And those guys had the vision to say, you know, I think this is really important. 
So anyway, that's where our first Mercury amp came from. It was eight watts. It had a three position boost. So you had variety, you know, that's the idea of variety. The other important thing was reverb, even though it's a small wattage amp. And that was the first attenuator we did. Um, so that amp, in a way, it was uh, a breakthrough because you didn't really see these full featured small low watt amps. But that thing really is what started car amps. I mean, we had so much success with that. Um, that was a real transition point for us. Um, so that tradition we've, we've carried on. And then with the Super B, I really wanted to go back to somewhat of that black face fender vibe that I like so much in my deluxe or, you know, the Super Reverb, which is another amp I like a lot, um, and bring those big, glassy, scooped, you know, rich, dynamic sounds into a lower wattage package that, one, works great at home, but in reality, these days, live, I played live with the Super B, you just don't need much stage volume. I think of the amp as your personal monitor, and then if it's a big place, it's mic'd, and if it's a small little club, well, that's 10 watts is enough to get to the point where the amp's doing some work and you can really enjoy it. Uh, I may have drifted away from the <laughs> question, so hit me again. Of course, that, that's the, the attenuator we're talking about. What about the three position uh, preset there as well with the different overdrives? Okay, yeah, that's a great question. So the sting switch, what I try to do with every one of our amps is bring a lot of value, a lot of fun and a lot of value. So rather than just having one set sound, you know, when you work with that, though, even with one sound, with the tone controls and volume attenuator, you've got a lot of range. I wanted to uh, create some other flavors, and I thought of those as almost eras of, uh, of blackface amps, somewhat fictionalized in a way, but all super useful. So. We have three positions, 64, which has even more scooping than a uh, typical blackface amp. So that mid-range is really pulled down. And what that gives you is this just beautiful, oh God, dynamic range, this sweeping kind of hollow, wonderful sound. That's in 64. 68 is more the straight up archetypal kind of blackface, my deluxe reverb sound, just glassy in your face but but clear and then 72 is a take on in some ways a modified fender kind of sound uh, i'm doing a fair amount in the circuit with each of those switches there's four things happening at once but um but the end result is that in 72 you have a lot more pushed almost marshall meets fender kind of vibe to it the mid-range comes forward though you could still take that out out if you wanted uh, but it's a more gainy, punchy, grindy sound, um, which really likes to be turned up. And I should mention, with all those settings, the amp takes pedals really well. So you can, you know, you can sculpt any way you want to go. It's just a great, great platform. And with those three settings, you can change the flavor and the response of the amp. And again, it's just giving you more. That's what we try to do. Nick Jennison here. Today we're taking a look at the Super B from Car Amplifiers. This diminutive 10 watt combo is a love letter to great blackface tones of yesteryear and with a three position sting switch it gives you so many great kind of classic California combo tones that we're going to explore fully in just a moment. But before we do that, let's talk a little bit about what makes this beautiful little amp tick. First of all, it is resplendent in red and cream livery. It looks absolutely drop dead gorgeous. It is 10 watts, but believe me, a blackface 10 watts is more than loud enough for pretty much any gig. In fact, if it's good enough for the heartbreakers, then it's probably good enough for you. So let's talk a little bit about the controls across the top. The control panel's nice and bright. You can see it's super clear on dark stages. We've got a volume, which you might think of also as a gain control beyond a certain point, because once you get it past about two o'clock, the amp's starting to break up really nicely. There's a three position sting switch, which gives you different voicings that we'll talk about in a moment. Treble, middle, bass, a spring reverb, and a switchable attenuator, which allows you to take the amp down from two watts to below one watt if you're playing in a studio situation 
situation or just jamming out late at night in your apartment or wherever. It's not going to irritate the neighbors. But on the full cranked 10 watts, you have more than enough volume for pretty much any gig. Certainly any gig that I'm going to find myself doing, that's for sure. So speaking of the Sting switch, let's take a little bit of a look at that. Now what we have here is a three position switch that's going to give you different blackface inspired tones. Right up the middle in the 68 position, we have a straight up super authentic classic Fender blackface type tone. In the 64 position, we have a deeper mid scoop for more sparkle and more perceived low end, even though the low end's pretty much consistent throughout these modes because the mids have been cut out, you're going to get the feeling of more lows. It's a really beautiful, clean sound, especially. And then if we knock things up to 72, we get a mid pushed sound that shifts the position of the tone stack and gives you almost like a Marshall type tone. Don't think about like JCM 800 when I'm saying this. It's very much more like a JTM 45 type sound, really gritty in the mids with this lovely blown out bass. That's absolutely killer for certain types of pedals, which again, we'll explore momentarily. But before we do any of that, that, let's take a listen to the effect the Sting Switch has on the tone. <laughs> Very versatile in a small package, which is all it's about. And there's some excellent, tasty tone circuits in there delivering, say, crystal clear bell like chimes to nitty gritty overdrive. And we have a lot of viewers watching who I know will want to know what valves you have under the bonnet. Oh, or as this, a, this is a USA, a USA special, maybe I should say, what tubes you have, have under the hood? <laughs> yeah, uh, and you're referring to the six. Um you mean the uh, Super B in particular? Yeah, well, I know you have the traditional 12AX 87s of the preamp, but you'll have an unusual choice for the output tubes. That's right, that's right. So it's uh, a tube called the 6BM8, which is in current production by Electro Harmonics. Uh, that was a tube that was used a lot in small hi fis, a lot of Japanese hi fis in the 60s, but also British uh, hi fis. It is, you could think of it as a, to me the sound is a lot like a halfway between a 6V6 and a 6L6, but with about 60% of the power of a 6V6. Um, so sometimes I try to do things that are just simply interesting, you know, not going to the same tubes we know and love. There's plenty of amps that are already doing that, ours included, but to try to find some new flavors, and the 6BM8 being that it's current production so you can get it, we don't have to worry about new old stock. Uh, and the other thing I wanted to do was make this low wattage push-pull amp. A lot of times when folks, and uh, hopefully I'm not boring anybody here, but a lot of times when folks want a lower watt amp, you go with a single-ended amp, which is, that just uses one power tube typically, and it has much less power. And then usually as you go up in power, you have a push-pull amp, which is two tubes working together back and forth. And that gives you a lot more dynamics and punch and power. Now the trick is I wanted the amp to be low powered, yet have that push-pull sound, which is what we hear in the Super Reverb and the Deluxe and, you know, in a Marshall. So uh, that, that kind of led me to that 6BM8. And I, I'll tell you, um, it's, it's a great tube, but it took some work to get it to, to do what I wanted it to because uh, uh, I had to really tweak the voltage and current values to get it to sound to sound like a big tube, but at a low volume. It, um, anyway, you know, every time I do a new amp, it's an education, and I, I try to re remember those things for the next one. It was nice to have a little bit of techie talk. I got one more on that subject. I mean, the reverb on all the combos is noticeably lush, warm, and full. So what tube have you got driving that circuit? So to answer the question, the tube is a 12AT7, which would be typical of a blackface amp. Um, and then the return is a 12AX7. 
But the return circuit, I've kind of messed around with a little bit and I'm using some unusual values, not only in the pot, but in the way uh, the pot works as you turn it up. So you can go from sort of traditional reverb sounds to huge and deep sounds. In other words, the reverb has a lot more range. Now the spring reverb on this amplifier has been tuned to work beautifully with the output transformer. It really sounds killer and super authentic and there's a really great usable range of reverb on tap from just a little splash all the way through to full on surfy madness. And there's even a really cool trick where if you stick the sting switch into the 72 position and turn all of the tone controls to zero, you get a reverb only sound, which is super cool. And that only works in the 72 position because of where the tone stack is. Now, interestingly enough, the position of the sting switch is also going to affect the sound of the reverb. So we're going to explore that too. Let's start by playing with the volume set around 12 o'clock, which is going to give us just a little bit of hair on the amp, and then we'll turn it all the way up full. Again, we'll explore the effect of the sting switch on the spring reverb, and I'm going to show you just how versatile this amp's reverb circuit is. <laughs> So the Super B is the latest car amplifier today. How many are in the series now, Steve? Let's see. I'm going to count right in front of the people here, starting from the lowest power. And I hope I don't uh, miss any. We've got the Raleigh at 3 watts. Next up is the Super B, 10 watts. Skylark at 12, which that has uh, six V6s. It's a different sound. Then is the Sportsman at 18 to 20. Kind of in that same range. Gosh, there's a clump of the Mercury V, very British sounding, but about 18 watts. The Telstar's around 18. These all have, if you just go by the wattage, you're thinking, oh, these are similar amps, but they're really so different in sound. You might have to do some editing while I try to remember. I think altogether, I, there have probably been 20 different models through time, but typically there are eight active models at any point. Well, that, as I say, that's a sign of a good amp and having so many in, in the series and you keep moving on and moving on and moving on. And your artist list is very impressive on your website. You've got some of the biggest names in guitar music using car amplifiers. Oh, thanks, thanks. And, and uh, Lars, this, we're so happy when people use them. A lot of the time, you know, we don't even know it. I'll hear about it after the fact. A dealer might call and say, hey, some so-and-so just came and bought one of your amps. Or, uh, you know, I'll, I'll hear from another artist, oh, yeah, a friend of mine, well-known person, used this amp of yours in the studio. So uh, it is super exciting. Sometimes we have direct relationships with the artists, though I have to say for us, I think that's that's more the exception than the rule. And it may be, too, that a lot of folks just, you know, they just want to buy what they want and not feel like they're obligated or, you know, there's any type of uh, thing they have to do. So, yeah, it, but it is super exciting when we find out about an artist or have a direct relationship with them. Um, and, you know, we're in a small town in North Carolina. We're not near gigantic music venues, so there's some interesting stuff near us. Uh, that said, we've had, you know, People visit this shop, Bill Frizzell, Yuma Kakonin. I know I'm forgetting many, many people, but it's it's always wild when we have these people come to this tiny town, you know, because they're touring, 
in the old days and soon to be new days. And they just stop in on their way between other places. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very gratifying. And of course, they're all real tone machines responding really well to all pickup permutations, single coils, P90s, humbuckers, for example. And they effortlessly adapt to all styles, surf, country, blues, all that stuff. And you say they're pedal friendly. So if somebody wants to enter, say, uh, black metal, death metal, they can add a pedal and the amp will take it lovely. Um, yes, yes. I mean, I use pedals. I love pedals. So I believe when the input section is really clear and our, our amps have a lot of fidelity um, and top to bottom openness, that's a great, great platform for pedals. So while this amp sounds absolutely killer on its own, it's also a fabulous pedal platform. To that end, we're gonna try two fairly standard pedals. We have a mini tube screamer, which I'm gonna throw into the 64 mode where the mid scoop will flatten the mid hump in our green little overdrive pedal. We're also gonna try a very hairy sounding fuzz, literally hairy, it's got quite a lot of my hair stuck to the bottom of it. This is an Electroharmonix Octavix, it's an octave fuzz. We'll dial a little bit of splatty octave in there there, and I'm going to go to the mid pushed 72 mode for that example, which is going to round out the sound of our hairy Larry fuzz. Let's check those two pedals out now. <laughs> So where can we check out car amps in the UK, Steve? Uh, well, we really have one super strong and wonderful dealer, uh, Code of Music. We've been working with them, gosh, I think from around 2005 or six, so a really long time. Those guys are great. Uh, they've supported us and, you know, I love Code of Music. Yeah, that's Doug and his team. They offer great advice and service. I mean, the whole car thing works, doesn't it? Uh, a lightweight, sturdy combo catering for all styles, vintage and modern. Again, looking fab and groovy and a choice of colored vinyls. Well, thanks, yeah. And you know, the, the power thing these days, I almost feel like it doesn't matter. As I said before, you know, you really don't need much power on stage and often the less you have, the better because you can get into the amp more and then if you need it, let the PA do the work. And some pros want more power. You know, they'll say, oh, I love this certain model. Could I have a double power version? And, you know, it takes so much prototyping to come up with these amps and get that certain sound and flavor and feel. My recommendation at that point is get two. I know that's great for us, but get two and play in stereo because that's more than double the power. The, the sound of it is more than double. And that you retain that same flavor of the amp that you know we came up with rather than trying to just shoehorn in more power and then you know if you have a small gig you bring one if you have a big one you bring two it's just a wonderful way to go yes yeah, so, and of course and with the attenuator you can go in the studio and like you say you can drop the, the wattage down but you're not losing anything you've still got that big sound it's very impressive so car amps say themselves that 10 watts is the new 100 and believe me if you've played in any professional or semi-professional situation lately you'll know exactly what they're talking about 10 watts with this kind of amplifier is absolutely sufficient for just about any gig and occasionally it's too much so car have built built in an attenuator which you can activate with this toggle switch right here and it allows you to switch the amp down from 2 watts all the way down to below 1 watt. Now the really cool thing about this is because the attenuator is working with the amp's output transformer it's not going to give you any loss in tone and believe me I've used some attenuators that absolutely suck this is not one of them it sounds absolutely killer let's explore the range of attenuation now. <laughs> Thank you. 
I mean, whilst they sit in the boutique category, they also, I would call them modern classics. Uh, well, thank you. Yes, uh, you know, we hope so. Been doing this now for about 23 years. Uh, hard to believe. I never imagined uh, it would go on like this and, and become such a, a success. You know, that Ultra makes me very happy. And I have a great group of guys, a core group of fellas. There's eight of us and an old chicken hatchery here in North Carolina making these amps. We do all the cabinetry and all the circuitry. Um, yeah, so I'm hoping that, you know, one day they're looked back on as, as one of those classic brands that, that people like to uh, collect. So for me, the mark of a great amplifier is not just how well it sounds on its own or how well it deals with a variety of pedals, but also how well it deals with a variety of guitars. Now, up until this point, we've been listening to my red Paul Reed Smith Custom 22, which is a humbucker equipped instrument, obviously. We're gonna try two other guitar types. Let's try some single coils, and we'll also try some fat P90s. And for that, I'm gonna grab my slide. Let's take a listen to that now. So there you have it guys, whether you're into sparkling, super clean blackface tones or a more British inspired blown out overdrive, the Car Super B has you covered. It looks gorgeous, sounds absolutely fantastic. It is surprisingly lightweight for a professional standard amplifier. There's really not a lot not to love about this. It takes pedals really well, deals with a bunch of different guitars with dignity and aplomb. Really big fan of this little amp there. My name's Nick Jennison. This one more time is the car super b i'll see you next time steve it's been great talking to you all the way from pittsburgh i've actually driven through there in chatham county north carolina usa thank you for coming on the show and chatting about your wonderful car amps yeah it's been a, a pleasure to do this and something new maybe we can do it again one day <laughs> for sure nice to speak to you steve all right thanks <laughs>